Hello, 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 Liverpool, look at you. How we feeling? We have a full house here today, but again, if you were here on the last panel, I'm gonna warn you, this is not how we do it in Liverpool. Not at Comic-Con, not at Monopoly events. I'm gonna ask you one more time, Liverpool, how are we feeling today? There we go, that's the energy we need. Well, I am so excited for this next panel. Without further ado, please welcome your amazing stars from The Walking Dead. Give them a round of applause, starting with Seth Gilliam. Woohoo! And please welcome Ross Marquand. Woo! And last but certainly not least, please welcome the beautiful Nadia Hilker. Liverpool, make some noise for The Walking Dead. I know you're excited for this one, guys. I'm gonna ask just a few questions, then we're gonna take it to you guys. We have microphones right here, number one, number two, and up at the top, number three and number four. So in a few minutes, if you wanna start lining up, we will get to you. But guys, welcome to Liverpool. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Testing, testing. Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> How are you enjoying the UK so far? It's only been um, a couple hours, but I love the UK. I love boots. I, I love boots. Um, I haven't been in one yet, but I love those chocolate eggs. Mm. Cadbury. Um, the Cadbury. Oh yeah. Ah. At two o'clock this morning, I was wandering the streets of Liverpool, and I found a, um, Cadbury eggs are my favorite candy on the planet. Where did you find that? Uh, the, the convenience mart. Uh, some some place. Open at two a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's you guys wanted to see it. Yeah, it was yeah. great. Okay, uh, nice. It was great, and nice. I ate it all like like an like an animal, just like. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, they're the best. It was so good. Have you ever had them, Seth? I have. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big fan. Yes, and how are you enjoying the UK so far? I haven't seen much of it. Not yet. All right. He's been in the hotel room all day, so. No, I got in. Like I flew in at 6:20 a.m. yesterday. And I uh, called myself, uh, uh, the, the Beatles are my favorite group since I'm 11 years old. Called myself, I was going to do a Beatles tour. I was going to go every place the Beatles ever did anything. I don't care if the buildings had changed. Did Paul McCartney vomit here? I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> and I wound up in the fetal position, sleeping and dreaming of slaying the dragon on the mountain and saving the universe. And I had no idea what happened. That sounds kind of cool, though. Liverpool's a fun town for sure, and if you're a Beatles fan, you're certainly in the right place. But let's start with you. So starting The Walking Dead, how has the fan interaction been so far? Because as you can see, it is a diehard fan base you guys have going here, no pun intended. Round of applause for yourselves. Yes. Tell us about the fan base so far. How have they been to you? Um, just amazing. Um, I, I did The 100 before, and I love that show. I love the fan base. Um, but it's a younger fan base, um, therefore it's more emotional because obviously being a young person in this world is, also being an older person in this world is, a person in this world in general is hard, but so it's, it, it, it's, there is more pain or more, whereas Walking Dead is just, everyone's just super chill and happy and, and just, yeah, a healthy functioning family. I don't want to say that the hundred is not a healthy fun. Okay, shut up, Nadia. I'm just gonna <laughs> shut up. How do you feel about it, Ross? How do you feel? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I was a fan before I got on the show too, and uh, I think, you know, to your point, it's like it's a multi generational yeah. fan. Fan. My 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 parents who are. My dad's 80, my mom's 76. They're probably gonna kill me for saying that. Um, they originally weren't gonna watch the show. They were like, oh, it's not for us. We don't like zombies or horror. And I said, well, your son's on the damn thing. Can you please watch it? And, and now they've seen it three times all together, the whole, the whole series. So I just think it's cool that families from, we've had kids as young as three or four years old come up and say they're, they watch the show, which I think is a little inappropriate, uh, but three or four up to 80 or 90 watching the show together as a family, which is really cool, so yeah. And thank you guys for watching, honestly, yeah. so. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How the fan reactions have been, the fan base, you have a very loyal fan base for The Walking Dead. Um, they, were, uh, uh, they were pretty harsh at first, well, for now you. They, yeah, to me, they were pretty harsh. 
Now they love me and I love them right back. That deserves a round of applause. Well, question for you, Seth. So you've been to some of my favorite shows, Law and & Order and The Wire, and you have a theater background. Did you ever see yourself as an actor in this sort of horror genre, post-apocalyptic genre? No, I did not see myself in this, uh, in this kind of genre. I am not a big horror fan. I'm very squeamish, and I don't like being afraid. So when The Walking Dead came on, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. And then um, I got an offer to audition for it, and I had to watch it. I, I figured I would watch the first 15 minutes to get the tone of the show. Um, and then I wound up power watching like the first four seasons on Saturday and then rewatched it again on Sunday. And then on Monday morning, I was on top of a rock screaming for my life. And it was surreal. But um, I've since learned to not love horror, but be able to watch horror and appreciate horror. And, um, and being a part of the show has opened up my world in so many different ways, and that being one that I'm really appreciative of and grateful for, because I'm a big movie fan and I like being entertained, I like watching shows, I like um, storytelling and everything else. And the storytelling and, uh, and with the mix of the, the horror and the gore on this show has just been a brilliant combination, so that there's just enough to keep you going if you like one or like the other or like the other. You know, it'll come back to it in another 16 minutes and you'll get your drama. In another 12 minutes, you'll get another fright or something like that. So, um, so I, I, uh, I, I, I love uh, the way it's kind of opened me up in a sense to something that I was, um, that I was ignorant to. How about you, Ross? Was the horror genre your jam or did yeah, you see yourself in it? I was a big horror fan before I got on it. Um, the Shining is my all-time favorite horror movie. Um, I really prefer more psychological horror, though, um, where, where you kind of have to fill in the blanks yourself. The really gory stuff like Saw and, and that stuff where it's almost like gore porn, I don't really go for that. Gorn. Yeah, Gorn. That's a great... Oh, can we get that trending on Twitter? <laughs> Gorn? Yeah, yeah. I had to. Ooh, that's a good... Yeah. Hashtag Gorn. Uh, hashtag yeah. Gorn, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like seeing people ripped apart, and I, I know we have that a few times on our show, of course, but when it's, when it's zombies, it doesn't bother me as much. When it's real people getting ripped apart, and I, I don't really care for that, but um, um, I think our show does a good job of, of kind of having a, a, enough of the psychological horror mixed with the, the physical horror that, that keeps people like me satiated and not overwhelmed because I, I'm a very visual person and, and when I see people getting ripped in half it just it sticks with me. You know? Right. But there's story there's not just gore for the sake of gore. Exactly. Totally yeah, get yeah. it. Gorn. There we go. Gorn. Yeah. And Nadia how about you? Were you squeamish? Or horror was that sort of well, I love thing? Gorn. You love Gorn? <laughs> I love Gorn. Well you're German so it's kind that's, of like That's on top yeah. I mean but I will say I love Gorn like once a year but then like hardcore Gorn like hills have eyes, like that. But that's once a year, and then I'm, you know, then I'm good on that part. Um, but Walking Dead is, it's, you know, it's not black, it's not white. It's like, come on, either Gorn or Friends. Right. But I think if we say it enough, it actually will become trending on Twitter. Gorn. We're doing a good job. We're going to get a chant going. Gorn. 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 People outside are going, what are they doing in there? Well, question for you, Nadia. So you have a modeling background, obviously, being as gorgeous as you are. Was was acting more of your goal, or were you more into the modeling side? I was never into any of each. Um, I uh, did ballet. I'm proud of that. And that got me into modeling. Um, I hate talking about it. Uh, but I loved doing it because I got to see the world and earn money um, early on. I, I don't understand. How does, how does ballet get you into modeling? There you go. Because when you do ballet, then you're skinny and you're good in terms of movement. So all of model agents come to ballet classes. Ah. And, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> ballet schools and scout girls. And that's, there is a connection. Um, no, I never thought of becoming an actress. That was pretty much an accident. Um, it was supposed to happen the way it happened. Um, but no one in my life ever, no one in my family, friend circle acted. Um, yeah. Happy accident, lucky for us that yeah. it worked out Thank that way. You. Thank well, you. now walk us through a day on set because a show like The Walking Dead, I mean, it's, you have a lot of serious moments, a lot of gorn. 
there we go again. But is there a lot of camaraderie on set? Is it, you know, is it a fun atmosphere? Is it a family vibe? Oh, it would be interesting to hear the three versions, especially Seth's version yeah. um, of a day on set. Um, I think you would get three very, very different versions of. <laughs> um, Seth, how about you? Give us your version. You you get paid to work with people, and you do the best you can, man. No, 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 no. Thought he wants more. <laughs> Um, a, a, a day on the set for me is mostly trying to not um, distract or disturb people with my singing because I, yeah. I tend to sing a lot to calm my nerves and to not overrun scenes in my head uh, so I can keep my choices fresh. Um, so in order to, to keep from just being in, you know, actor mode, actor mode, actor mode, with the dialogue flying around my head and the dialogue flying around my head, I'll sing, you know, Jumping Jack Flash at the top of my lungs. And um, it, it, it's mostly hard on people like Ross, who were my trailer mates, because... Um, you remained? You stayed next to Seth? I, 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 for the last four or five years, we've yeah. almost exclusively been right next to each other in each other's trailer. And you didn't ask Lennon to move you? <laughs> I probably should have. Yeah, no, I mean, like every morning. It doesn't matter how early. And you liked four, it, though. You liked I, it. What am I going to do? I'm not going to ask. It'll, it'll be, you know. But no, every, was, every four or five. Very polite. Are you, are you, are you, uh, you going to be singing this morning? Because <laughs> I have a monologue yeah. I have to learn. Yeah. But it's it's cool, totally cool if you're going to sing. Yeah, if you want to sing at the top of your lungs while you have to memorize pages of dialogue, it's totally cool, man. Yeah, yeah, I just, like, maybe I'll just go into my car for a little bit, you know. Because he'll, he'll literally, at the top, of, and he's, he's an amazing singer. He won't do it right now, but he's a brilliant singer. He doesn't yeah, like thanks, being put on the spot. thanks, thanks, Ross. Get the crowd against no, no, no. me. He's, he's great, but he's not going to do it he for hate, you guys. He hates guys. being put on the spot, but he's honestly one of the best singers out there. Like, he's incredible. He's beautiful voice. You are. You, you do have a beautiful voice. I'm not going to, no, no, no. I was born in a crossfire hurricane And I howled at my ma in the driving rain But it's all right, yeah In fact, it's a guess But it's all right I'm jumping Jack Flash It's a guess, guess, guess How's that for a Comic-Con Liverpool exclusive? Bravo. Bravo. I have one more question, but then we're going to take it to you guys. So please don't be shy. Just join any of the microphones here. We've got four uh, sitting in the crowd for you there. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, tell me, since you've been here in Liverpool, uh, you, you've probably seen here at our Comic-Con, so we have a lot of cosplay. Have you ever had anyone cosplay as your character? And what was that like? It's wild when they get my tattoos. That's wild. On I your face is really just like, wow, no. that's bold. No, but like full on wow. arms. Wow. I had, I think, three so far. That's. Wow. And then they dye their hair and like get the curls. How, how do you call that in English when you. Oh, um, perm? Uh, perm? Perm? The perm, yeah. yeah. Get a perm and that's wild. That's. Yeah. I don't know why you looked at me when you talked about hair. Very confused. You know, you get the. With, no, I don't. No, I wanted to say relaxer, and I think I looked at you. Yes. Ross would know what a relaxer is. <laughs> I use relaxer, actually. You use relaxer. For the longest, because I have very on curly face, hair when on I grow up. Beard. If, yeah. And I, I wanted straight hair because I hated my curly hair, and I yeah, used no. relaxer for a while. Yeah, yeah. Were you bold after? Yeah. It, actually, it, did, yeah, it took it a lot of hair. Yeah. Your it hair. wasn't good. Relaxer. Do you know what relaxer is? It's, yeah. No, it's, it's a very bad chemical stuff that straightens your hair when it's curly. And perm, that's the opposite. So you were super curly before, you're saying? Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. We actually have a picture of it right here. Uh, just, just kidding, just kidding. Oh no, kidding. that's Art Garfunkel. <laughs> <It's the laughs> totally kidding. We're gonna take it to the fans now, guys. So again, don't be shy. We've got get a up, question. Get up, get up. Uh, yeah, so here they come. Yes, all right, guys. We have a time for just a few questions, so make sure that there we go. Is there a question up there at number four? If not, we'll go to number one. Nope, she's good. Okay, let's go to number one. Hello. Right Hi, I'm a massive fan of the show. I just wanted to ask uh, for all of you, really, which is your favorite villain arc so far? <laughs> the 
They have to think about it. It's I a mean, really good question. Negan has the most interesting character arc because he's been given this. No, don't cheer for him. No, 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 no. D don't hold the bat. What are you trying to? If, like, the dude killed two of my favorite characters in the show and is indirectly responsible for the death of Eric and so many other people. So no, no cheering for Negan, okay? Um, but I do think his arc has been the most interesting for sure. Yeah, of all the villains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the governor. Yeah, with the daughter. Like, that's some weird, weird stuff. I like the Negan arc, but I, 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 my favorite villains were, were the Whisperers because they were like, you know, a cult who walked among the dead. That's just crazy. Negan is just psychotic and a narcissist and a little insane, but these people were twisted and far gone. So I like the Whisperers. Good question. Thank you. We've got a question here on the right, uh, microphone number two. Hello. Hi, I'm Nikki from Yorkshire. Hi, Wait for the cheers, come on. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, obviously, right from the beginning, Rick was the linchpin and what most people associated with Walking Dead. What was the reaction from Cass when you realised he was going to disappear? Who gets his trailer? <laughs> <N> next question. <laughs> um, no, what was, <laughs> what was your re response, Ross? Uh, that's very funny. Sorry, um, he a Andy. I've I've worked on a, I've worked on a few shows over the years, but Andy was by far the best number one you could possibly hope for. He was, um, and I talk about him like he's passed on. He's he's obviously still with us, but we haven't seen him for so long. You know, he's been gone for three years or so. Yeah, or maybe three and a half years. Um, he, he is the sweetest, most dedicated actor I think I've ever worked with. Like he, like he shows up even on Thank days. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. No, he, he, he shows up on days even when he's not even working. He'll, he'll be there first in, first out, or last out rather. Um, first out. He'll be like, hey, I'm done. No, but like the, in, in, in five or six years of working with him, the only time he broke character was when he hit my nose in the, the first time I worked with him. The, but the, other than that, because he like, genuinely felt bad, because he's like, oh, sorry, Matt, didn't mean to hit you. Um, but like, other than that, he is, he is Rick, and he believes he's Rick when he shows up on set. He's a brilliant actor, and we, we, we miss him like crazy. So um, if you see him, because he lives nearby, uh, tell him we love him and we miss him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you worry about what was going to happen to the future of the show without Rick? Yeah, I think we all did. Yeah, I thought, oh, great, I'm going to get more screen time. <laughs> What's also very well, exciting it's true. <laughs> was also very exciting for me to come. So the last thing you see is Rick, and then the first thing you see is my face. And I'm like, they're going to hate me. Like, I, there's no way I'm going to, you know, be popular. Because you right after I, the time jump. That's right, right. right. And That's then you right. see the grass, and then Magna runs in. And has the two kills, and oh, I'm like, shit. I'm screwed already, like because, uh, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's he's great. He's great. We've got a question all the way up here, microphone number three. Hiya. Um. So I was wondering what your favorite plot line was of the entire show. The Grove is my favorite episode. That's the look at the flowers episode. Oh, um. Yeah. That to me was like the, That's like the 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 crux of the show because. Season four, I think, was my favorite season by far, but the reason why is because you have these little bottle episodes where you're focusing on different characters, and that was the one where Tyrese and, and Carol were really contemplating, like, could we start a family here? Could we just make this our family unit, and that'll be, that'll be it? And I think that's what makes the show fascinating, is that in the midst of all this chaos and destruction, can we rebuild our lives with our chosen family? Not our real family, but our chosen family. And I think that that's why the show's been so popular over all these years, because we see ourselves in certain characters. And The Grove, for me, is like, that's the perfect episode of the show. Yeah. Amazing. My favorite arc, right, was the question? Your well, favorite story I'm sorry, arc? I messed up. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, it's all right. Freestyle, baby, freestyle. Right, so, yeah. Uh, my favorite uh, arc was the one where Father Gabriel hooked up with Rosita was my favorite <laughs> story. What? It's true. We dig the honesty. How about you, Nadia? Any plot lines that stuck? The one that Magna never got that I played out in my head. 
what is that? The lovey dovey and the taking over and the <laughs> the one where Rick turns into Magna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a lot of just love and passion and love. You're, 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 you're where the show is called The Walking Dead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dead need love too. That's right. <laughs> We've got a question over here, microphone number one. Hiya. Um, a question for Ross. How comfortable is your prosthetic? What you, what you wear? Oh, the, the arm? Yeah. Uh, how long does it take to get on and off? Yeah. How comfortable? Oh, how comfortable? It's not comfortable at all. Um, you, you basically have to kind of move your thumb up in, and like this to kind of wedge it up in there because it's, it's not a lot of room. And uh, the coupler that's on there, it just kind of, you know, whittles away at your skin whenever you move it too much. So it was not fun to wear, but it looked cool. So it was all right. Yeah, yeah. It's like women in heels. They're not comfortable, but damn, they look cool, That's right? exactly, that's a great analogy. Yeah, same. same thing. Same <laughs> thing, yeah, yeah. We've got a question from a lovely lady here on microphone two. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming to Liverpool. Seth, this one's for you. How do you feel about your character progression compared to the comic? Um, I assume you know what happened to you in the comic. <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell me how you feel about that. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Apparently, Magna wanted Father Gabriel to hang from his ankle, his broken ankle, wedged into a ladder and be gutted and then fed to the bone, which is what happens in the comic. I'm glad I did not get that fate. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I actually, um, I, I thought it was uh, a fantastic uh, story arc to play, to go from being a complete... Um, coward hiding under the guise of being a godly man to, um, to a fully realized man who has a very peculiar relationship with God. Um, and it was exciting to play the, the kind of roller coaster emotional changes and shifts that go on in the character over the course of the years. And uh, as an actor, you, you kind of look for things that can show your range that you get to play a great deal of your range in. And I was fortunate enough to have that happen with one character on one show. It usually takes a career to do that kind of thing. So I've been very fortunate in that regard and I'm very grateful in that regard. And I'm, and I'm also pretty happy that it, they didn't go with the comic book ending and the, the story that they have for Father Gabriel is a different one. Thank you. <laughs> Great question, thank you. We're gonna go to microphone uh, three at the top here on the left. Um, I was just wondering who's the worst scene partner in like terms of making you break and stuff on set? Sure, yeah. Lauren. Wouldn't you say, or, or Melissa or Lauren probably, right? Melissa. Yeah, they, they joke around all the time. I mean, Melissa doesn't joke around, she laughs a lot at her own inner jokes, <laughs> so. She's on the other side of the camera because she always wants to be there for you. She doesn't have to be, you know, they could, you could use a piece of tape or a tennis ball and do your monologue, essentially. And Melissa will want to be there to make eye contact with you. But then halfway through your monologue, she will have told herself a joke. <laughs> and she will try to stifle her laugh. So you see her face trying to stifle a laugh, which of course is hard to not laugh yourself because you see the pain that she's in, trying not to laugh, and you're wondering, is it what I'm doing that's, that's making her laugh? Or she's gone and told herself a joke, hasn't she? And it's, um, it's both really fun to play with and an exceedingly frustrating at the same time. Another question here, uh, microphone number one. Okay, so hi guys. Um, I'm so, so happy to see you. It's mind-blowing. Um, and my question is, um, I love asking this, but you might not have one, but have you had like the, the funniest situation or the weirdest with a fan? I love hearing these stories. There's probably a lot, right? Have you had any? But it should be funny, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had a fan once. <laughs> Poor fellow. 
apparently when he was got nervous, he got gaseous. No. And we were attempting to take selfies. And he kept farting and apologizing. <laughs> and I thought, if you don't apologize, we can get the selfie. <laughs> and you can take the gas away. <laughs> but he kept apologizing, which stopped and extended it. And it was about six minutes of, <laughs> oh, so, 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 therapy, therapy, sorry, therapy, sorry. <laughs> let's, let's, let's take a picture, man. <laughs> no, oh, so terribly sorry, terribly sorry. Oh my God. Looking back, it's funny. It wasn't here today, was it? No, it wasn't. That would here be today. awkward, wouldn't it? How <laughs> about you guys? No, I, I can't. Talk I mean, that. after a fart, fart stories are the best. So I wouldn't even. And my stuff is really dark, and weird. No farting, unfortunately. But I would welcome that over the other oh, side. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure you would welcome it for six straight minutes from a very that's, large. That's man, long. Yeah, that's. A very long. large man who apparently had a very particular diet. Oof. <laughs> We've got a question over here at microphone too. Uh, hi, um, I just wanted to ask two things. Um, so, if you had to pick one person out of the three of you to survive The Walking Dead, who would it be? Like, who, who would be the best, or you just like, are we just deciding who would live and who would die? Yeah. So, if you had to decide. Oh, you're <laughs> you're a maniac. Why would you Why would you make us decide that? Sorry. Is this Sophie's choices? What the hell was it? This is crazy. <laughs> Jesus. I, I, I mean, we both had a. Well, you can live. You can live. You're so youthful. You're so. You got so many years left. We've had. Hold, hold, hold on. <laughs> hold We've on. We've had a good life, haven't we, Seth? You, you've had a good life. You, oh, you haven't had a good life. Father Gabriel's been struggling for a while. I think. Yeah, all right, yeah. Nadia can live. You know. I, I'd say the same thing. Magna should live. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you much. Thank you. We've got a question up at microphone three here on the left. Hi, up. Hi, guys. Um, now that the filming is finished, have you taken any props home with you? Ooh. Yeah, it just stays between us if it's yeah, not yeah. confirmed. Oh, no. Yeah. Just recording this. Oh, no, 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 but I was gifted all my props. Oh, you were? From props. Gifted? No. Props came to me. Same for you. I. No. No, of course not. No, no props for me. Either. No props. I mean, we weren't. AMC told us we weren't allowed to take home any props because they might get used in one of the spinoffs or put into a museum, museum at some somewhere, point. Yeah. But the damnedest thing happens, you know, these trucks that transport this stuff, they have really bad latches on the end. Things fall off the back. Things fall off the back all the time, you know? It's kind of crazy. So, yeah, I don't know. Something might have fallen off. I don't know. Right. Oh, so who can say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a shotgun may have definitely fallen off the back of a truck. <laughs> a <shotgun. laughs> it's all allegedly, of uh, course. Yeah. Allegedly, allegedly. We've got a question over here at microphone number one. Hi. Um, Ross, this is a question for you. I'm a big fan of your impressions work. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So can you do any Walking Dead impressions? Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, all right. I'll do a little walking. You like Rick? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Coral. I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm not going to do that. You're so good at Daryl. I, I you do a fantastic Daryl. I do. You do but a I great Daryl, and Norman is not here. Man, I guess now that the show's over, I guess I'll... Show is over, and Norman is not here. All right, what? Yeah, we're walking around. Wait, what are you talking about? Right? Yeah, it's crazy, right? We gotta go around. We can't go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, there's that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got questions over here at microphone two. Hi. Um, sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> I just, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for like doing the show. It's been like my favorite show since I was 10. I'm like 22 next month, so it's been a while. Um, and Aaron's my favorite character. <laughs> but um, this one's a bit morbid. But if you could like revive any character, but you had to replace them with a different character, who would you choose? <laughs> yeah. Ross. <laughs> Because Aaron is her favorite character. Uh, I, I, I really like Shane. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I really like Shane. 
Oh, shit. No, you know what? I, w- I would bring back Abraham. And I'd like... Yeah. Abraham had the best lines, for one. And two, I just miss cutlets like crazy. But, uh, God, if I had to... I have to kill someone who's not been killed off? Yeah. To bring him back? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, man, what do you do? I mean, I guess I'd have to kill Negan. Because, you know, yeah. Oh, what, what? Like, he deserves... Your pity? The man's a psychopath, okay? Kill Negan, bring Abraham back. Yes, that's what I would say. Good answer. Good answer. They killed the guy next to me? No. No. What? Jeez. Did you guys have another question? He's my friend. (laughs) Oh, okay. Give her a round of applause and happy birthday to you. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, yeah. (laughs) Another question here. Uh. This will be our final question, unfortunately. We're running out of time. But question uh, for microphone number one. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could, like, swap with any characters in the show, if it, like, carried on. Um, what would, who would you swap with? Baby Judith. <laughs> Not older Judith, baby Judith, because I just want someone to carry me around <laughs> all the time. Wouldn't that be nice as an adult? Don't you ever feel like, it wouldn't be good to just have someone carry you places and feed you, change your diaper. <laughs> no one changes my diaper these days. I have to do it myself. <laughs> That's getting real That's deep right, right now. Um. He scooted away when you yeah, said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How about you guys? Would you swap roles with anyone? Oh, yeah, every character. Mm. I'd swap roles with Carol because she has such great hair. Don't we love the honesty? On that note, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. We're going to let them get back to the photo ops and autograph area so you can meet all of them. Thank you all. Please Thank give another Thanks round for of applause us. for Seth Gilliam, Nadia Hilker, and Ross Marquand of The Walking Dead. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget, they're going to be in the autograph area, so go say hi. We've got the grease panel coming up next, so I'll see you soon. <laughs>